Okay, Jamie and Kyle, oftentimes when people talk about idolatry, especially with our young people, and we know that they're, you know, putting other things before God, Mm -hmm. the approach is you shouldn't be doing that. It's this kind of finger waving, blaming type, you're breaking the Ten Commandments um, approach. But it sounds like that's not the approach you think, that's not a helpful approach in your view. So can you tell me what you think is the most helpful way of thinking about idolatry. Yeah, I, it's a great question because um, I, I don't want to go around denouncing young people as idolaters, <laughs> you know, it's like, it, and, and saying you don't have joy because, you know, you keep bowing the knee to Instagram or something. Uh, um, it, it's, it, the point isn't guilt. Right. It's, it's not denunciation, it's diagnosis. And, and it's... It, it's trying to get at more the existential experience of what it is to kind of give ourselves over to things that can't satisfy us. Mm-hmm. And and if we're especially talking about young people, I, I just think it's so crucial to realize that if, if young people have been sort of uh, um, suckered into giving themselves over to gods that can never satisfy or redeem or, or uh, give them what they're, they need, it's because we made that world. Right. <laughs> uh, um, you know, our, our idolatries are caught more than they're taught, and they are absorbed more than they are chosen, sort of intentionally. And and I think what we all need to do, if if idolatry is one of the inhibitors to joy, it's because we've created environments, contexts, patterns of culture that have effectively trained young people. Uh, to look for meaning, fulfillment, and significance from all of these false promises. And and in that sense, it's most, if there's any denunciation, it's more of us uh, uh, and the world we've made. It, it, for, for young people, I'm just trying to help offer them maybe a way to kind of understand their own malaise and sadness and frustration. Mm. 